Okay, let's read the newest chapter of One Piece. Let's go! 965, the Kurazumi clan conspiracy. Whoa! Is this about Orochi? And Genbesh, oh my family, stop making Arakos. You will expose us. And he stops these germs pirates, I think. So that's it for the cover page. And we're going to the chapter. Odin's journey is going swimmingly. There are four distant oceans in the world, which are divided by a long strip of sea. Even more surprisingly, this world is actually shaped like a sphere. How astounding! From a global perspective, Wana is so tiny. Where were you born, Toki? And so Odin is studying geography? <laughs> I think, I have no idea. I only know that both my parents were originally from Wana. That's why I want to go there. So she doesn't really know. There was a theory that she was born in Wana, but it wasn't uh, she who moved in place. It was Wana that moved because it was pulled by giants into this new Wana and she stayed in place. But she actually doesn't even know where she was born. She only knows that her parents are originally from Wana. And Odin is saying, Unfortunately, it seems unlikely that the ship will ever be able to return to Wana. Ah, oh, that's okay. When I'm with you, it feels like I've already reached my destination. Oh, how come? Foo -foo -foo, I wonder. So the romance blooms between Odin and Lady Toki. Oh, I might say just Toki, I think. And Marco, Marco noticed that and he's like blushing. Oh. He understood. I wonder what Lord Odin is up to, Nekomamusha is saying. Hey, don't interrupt, you tactless cat. <laughs> so everyone understands what's going on. That Odin and Toki, they have their romance and start of their romance. It seems that even Whitebeard has a natural enemy. That's Whitebeard's ship. It's the Navy, run for it. So Navy, Marines are his natural enemy. We should just fight them, Odin suggests. They're a large organization, Whitebeard answers. If we did stay to fight, more would keep showing up. So there's no point in fighting them. Let's just run away. And I think they already maybe look a bit older now, or maybe it's just my imagination. So that means that this organization is overseeing the entire world? Odin asks. Unbelievable to think that was even possible. So he just learned that the world is such a vast place and one is only a tiny speck in this giant sphere and now he's being told that there is some organization that is overseeing this entire gigantic world. Uh, you'll understand how things are if you keep traveling, Whitebeard explains. You will be surprised. In a way, your country is still free. Oh, that's a very interesting point, because since one is closed um, since Wana's borders are closed, how Odin sees it? It's uh, an isolated country and he feels trapped and he wants to see the world. And how the rest of the world sees it? It's not under the world government. It's um, living by itself. So basically it is free. 28 years ago, during the second year of Odin's voyage. So a few years has, have passed. No, maybe even less than two years had passed. He's out! How about Tamaga, Konbu, Chikuwa, Tsukuna? <gasps> no, wait, I have a better name in mind. It means unrivaled. His name will be Kozuki Momonosuke. <gasps> oh, wait, so that's really interesting how he and Lady Toki, they had a baby on White Beard's ship, and everyone is suggesting their own name for the baby. No, not their own name, but names that are related to food. Uh, because obviously, it's like a tradition, maybe, in Kazuki family to name everyone by food, like Odin and Sukiyaki. These are all dishes. But Odin, he is a rebel. He doesn't go with the tradition. He wants to name his son, his firstborn born son, something with the meaning unrivaled. Kazuki Momo no Suki. And um, of course, Momo is the first son because only now Hiyori is older because um, Momo no Suki was sent into the future. So obviously, he was a firstborn baby. 
Lord Odin, you are now a notorious outlaw with a bounty in the outside world, Isa says. <laughs> he doesn't look happy about it. Returning to Wana would be in Lady Toki and Lord Mamunasuki's best interest. I haven't yet found the answers I seek, Isa, Odin says. We'll be fine, <laughs> Taki's saying. So she doesn't uh, really need, want to go to one anymore. She's so uh, happy with Odin. It's funny that these newspapers never have any news about one, Nakamamushi says. I hope Kin is doing well. So obviously they don't have any news about one because it's a closed country. It's not being uh, overseen by the world government and by the Marines. It's just like with Zou, you know, explains. When a country has no means of contact with the outside world, information rarely gets out. So, <laughs> it could be a bad thing, it could be a good thing, it could go both ways. Division leaders? Since our numbers keep growing, how about it? I'm thinking of splitting the crew into five divisions, Whitebeard says. That's a great idea, let's do it, I agree. I leave the second division to you, Odin. No, I would rather not have that kind of responsibility. <laughs> just do it. So, yeah, White Beard's crew, it was just a simple crew at first, but then it grew bigger, 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 and he decided to uh, split it into five divisions, and he wanted Odin to lead the second division. I think that sounds pretty cool. Um, if um, numbers are any indication, then the first division would be like the coolest and the second division is like second coolest. So that's a cool position. Over time, many others would join the crew like we did. Don't you get it? They're not fishermen. They're pirates. Understand? Please, I've got nowhere else to go. What's your name? Siege. Fine then. Jump on. Another orphan. <laughs> And then, over time, many others would join the crew like we did, and they are showing us Blackbeard. So, Blackbeard, teach, he joined the crew, and he looks quite small here. He, he, and maybe we even can see his height. It's hard to say in the silhouettes, but he actually looks more like a child than an adult. Uh, I think it's hard to say. Maybe you can share your thoughts in the comments. Uh, to me, he looks more like a kid. And uh, now he wants to join Whitebeard and he's an orphan. <gasps> Damn. So I thought he might be a son of rocks. I'm not sure if the ages do work. Did he have that plan already about uh, the yummy yummy no me? Oh, that, that's really interesting. The more I sit during our travels, the more I realize how much more there is to see. I can no longer contain my adventurous spirit. Did you see that? There was something flying over there. Wait, Commander, we should scout things out first. What a great Commander. <laughs> in this regard, he is just like Luffy. Meanwhile, in Wana, all of the Daimyo have gathered in the flower capital. Lord Sukiyaki, Shogun Sukiyaki, is in critical condition. So, he is dying. But when Odin left the country, he was already kind of unhealthy. So, almost, I mean, about two years uh, passed, and he is close to his deathbed. I want Odin <coughs> to succeed me as the next Shogun. <coughs> Of course, Lord Tsukiyaki. However, Odin is away at the moment. If something were to happen to me before he returns, I feel that I must appoint an acting regent to take care of things until he return, his return. So, Odin was to be the next shogun. Lord Tsukiyaki is dying and uh, the people who are most close to him um, this is Yasui, and this man on the right, or if we are looking from Lord Tsukiyaki's perspective, he would be on his left. He really looks a bit like that dude. I think he also had uh, the surname Shimatsuki, and he was like the owner of that uh, Yukimaru, or should I say Onimaru, of that Kitsune. He really looks um, like this dude, so I will assume that this is him. I have chosen to appoint the man that Odin regards as a younger brother, Kurazumi Orochi. Orochi? Yasui thinks, why is he here? 
the man that Odin regards as a younger brother. So, I'm sure Odin does not regard Kurazumi Orochi as his younger brother. So, Orochi, he, I don't know how he did it. He lied to the Shogun, to Sukiyaki, and told him that he is close to Odin. And now Sukiyaki decided to make a regent, not Yasui as a regent, no, he decided to make Razumi Orochi a regent. So basically, in the first place, Orochi took the throne legally. That's insane. Did we know that? I don't think I knew that. Uh, that's just insane, guys. Okay, going on. And we see Orochi. He changed a bit uh, from when we first saw him in his in this flashback, and he still looks oh he looks sly. I cannot adequately express how grateful I am to Lord Tsukiyaki and Lord Odin. I may not even ever be able to fully repay my debt during this lifetime. I promise to use this opportunity to redeem the Kurozumi clan. I will atone for my grandfather's foolishness and help out in any way I can. I hope to have everything fully prepared for Lord Odin's eventual homecoming. He uses lies to change his position in this country. So his family uh, was, I don't know, there was something in his family. Had. His grandfather did something sinful, I guess. And now all the Kurazumi clan is seen in a bad light. And he lies that he wants to, that he wants to change it. But actually he doesn't. He is going to make it even worse until his return. I will serve a temporary substitute. I shall be no more than a humble figurehead. Please lend me your support. How come you never mentioned you were Kurazumi? Yasui asks. Forgive me. I'm very sorry. <gasps> Either he is not actually a Kurazumi, he is just some random guy from the streets. Or he is a Kurazumi and he was lying about it uh, because of such a bad name that Kurazumi family has. Crackle, crackle, rumble, rumble. I can see it. Your future. You shall become. Rumble, rumble, crackle, shogun. <gasps> Nick, yuck, yuck, yuck. Whoa, you, you frightened me. Stop trying to scare me, Granny. Who are you anyway? So, this is like a flashback inside the flashback, and it is the flashback of Kurazumi Orochi himself. So, in some temple, he found an old, I thought that was a man, but he says granny, so this is an old woman. And she said, ah, no, the man is uh, playing the instrument, and the woman is foretelling the future. And she told him that he will become Shogun, and she didn't lie, he actually did become Shogun. Do you not know what happened to your grandfather? So he really is Kurazumi. He wasn't lying about that. I heard that he committed seppuku, but I'm unsure about the specifics. No, that is a lie. He was killed by the Kazuki clan. But, but I heard he committed treason. Since when was struggling to obtain power a crime? <laughs> Guys! I found the real antagonist in this whole story. This granny, this fortune teller is the real antagonist. She's basically setting Orochi onto the wrong path. She's basically doing, she's saying there's nothing wrong with trying to obtain power. And she's setting him against Kazuki family, saying Kazuki family killed your grandfather. She's a real evil guy here, or evil granny. The ones with power ultimately decide what is right and what is wrong. What was once considered a crime can be redefined as noble. You see, the previous Kazuki Shogun didn't have any children to succeed him. And so the five daimyo who served the Kazuki Shogunate started to wonder who the next Shogun would be. Every single one of them believed themselves to be the best candidate. It was then that your grandfather started to make careful preparations. 
interesting to note, all these families include the word moon in their names, except for Kurazumi, which means black coal. And we see Shimatsuki clan, Kurazumi clan, Uzuki clan, Amatsuki clan, and Fugetsu clan. So we already know about uh, Kurazumi clan, Orochi comes from Kurazumi clan, and we heard about Shimatsuki, and I said already numerous times that I think that Zora comes from Shimatsuki family, and maybe we heard something about Amatsuki, I'm not sure, and Uzuki and forget so I think I'm new ones. And they all are connected with the word moon and uh, interesting fact. And moon is really a curious thing in one piece, you know. Y you remember that cover story with Enel? There is something connected to moon. There are some mysteries connected to moon. And for some reason, means they change in their long forms when they look at the moon. So maybe in this one arc, we will learn more about the mystery of the moon itself and why it affects means in this way. Maybe there is some actual interesting reason other than real life uh, references to werewolf, preparations to assassinate the other diagnose with Boys. So Orochi's grandfather wanted to assassinate the other Dinosaurus poison and you know Sukiyaki he is still quite young he could live for a while longer I mean in the in the present time of this flashback and somehow now he's ill and we are t talking about this poison I think that Orochi is feeding him with poison Okay, back to Orochi's flashback. His rivals disappeared one by one. Their absence being explained as an internal dispute. The shogun, having heard of the demise of his daimos, became bedridden from illness. Everything was going according to plan. He was on the cusp of claiming the country for himself when an heir was born. Kazuki Sukiyaki and we see a little infant Kazuki Sukiyaki and his beautiful mother man who is this granny I think this granny was like maybe a follower of Kurazumi family because she looks like she's personally attached to this story that spiteful Sukiyaki the Kurazumi clan's plot to take over the country was eventually exposed and your grandfather was forced to commit seppuku on top of that the entire clan was disbanded all the territory the castle the power gone and she's crying she was connected to that family somehow maybe she was a part of the family maybe she kind of served the family and it looks like maybe she lost everything too and she is salty about it and she found this young boy orochi and decided to use him as a tool for revenge i, I told you she's real evil here everything was taken from the kurazumi clan the name itself was scorned by the people and the surviving members were left in homeless squalor who is to blame for the pitiful living conditions you find yourself in who is to blame and orochi answers this himself the one that was born kazuki sukiyaki so now he hates sukiyaki yes if he had never been born you would be shogun me and he is imagining being a shogun. You will have that in the future. But at what cost? Indeed. Oh, how vexing. How spiteful. Are you perhaps my... No, Karazumi clans. So he has his uh, suspicions. Like, why are you so attached to this uh, fortune teller granny? Are you my or oh, this Kazuki clans? And he doesn't finish the sentence. Like, is she maybe some kind of you know the scabbard like a retainer of some sorts or maybe some um, high-ranking servant my identity does not matter just know that i endured many hardships while i was out of the country look at my face and she changes her face to a young woman and i bet it is her but when she was way younger and she looked so beautiful how did she change like that or they really had this thing like if you live happily 
and achieve all your dreams, that you will look beautiful even when you are old. And if you live in poverty and in unhappiness, then you will be like very, very ugly when you are old. It doesn't work with all the characters, but <laughs> but it seems to be like oh. And then she changes her face to his own roach's face. What my face? This is the power of the main main fruit. Same fruit as Mr. Two. Guys, same fruit as Bong Chan had. This is the same fruit that Bong Chan had. And this is what many many years ago so i guess this granny has died already so she didn't see her plan come to fruition and somehow her food how her food ended up so far away from one that's the question i have in my mind if you follow my instructions i shall grant you the power you need to become shogun and she shows him some fruit, but not main, main fruit. I bet that the fruit he really actually does have now. And he says, I will do anything. So we have the appearance of his fruit. Uh, it looks maybe a bit like a pineapple or something. I will do anything. Begin holding as much gold as you can and start manufacturing weapons. The quality of one's craftsmanship is exceptional. If you make good use of that advantage, you will be able to get some big players to back your cause. Hakumai, my name is Orochi. My entire family died due to illness. How tragic. You are welcome to work here for me, Yasui says. Orochi disappeared. It may just be a coincidence, but all the gold in the safe is gone too. So... Orochi, he took all the gold after running away from Yasui. So he came uh, to be Yasui's servant just to get his hands on his money. And then in Kuri, he comes to Odin. Are you the guy from Yasui's place? My name is Orochi. <laughs> Lord Yasui has already been so generous, so I couldn't bear asking him to lend me more money. I see, leave it to me. So now he came to Odin asking him for money. Please, I need more money. Again? Please, I need more money. Again? I will definitely pay you back soon. Please, I need money. Lord Odin, he said he would pay me back. So, so then he took a lot of money from Lord Odin. So he's basically gathering money for weapons, for all this stuff. Odin, this is sudden. Is something wrong? You came without your retainers. The flower capital. I want you to give this guy a job here at the castle. He works very hard and can even make medicine. He has been like a young brother to me. All right, farewell. <gasps> Orochi didn't lie about Odin thinking of him as a young brother. Actually, Odin just wanted to get rid of him because Orochi kept asking for money. So Odin came to his father, who has a lot of money, and told them, take this dude as a servant. I will lie to you that he's very good and all that, but really, I just want to get rid of him. Poor Sukiyaki! Odin, you dug your own grave. No! Oh, I'm an idiot! I'm an idiot! No, guys! I take all that back! Odin didn't do any of that! He didn't lie! Maybe... Uh, oh my gosh! Orochi just ran away from him like he ran away from Yasui and then this granny, she changed her appearance to Odin and as Odin, she came with Orochi to the castle and lied that Orochi is like a younger brother. Damn, it was all that granny. I finally made it this far. If something happens to me, <coughs> I leave everything to you, Orochi. Yes, Sir Lord Sukiyaki. Wait a minute. What is going on? I, I don't know. Where is real Lord Sukiyaki, guys? I, I can't believe this panel. 
we are shown Orochi with Lord Sukiyaki, and Lord Sukiyaki is saying, I will everything to you. And then they start laughing. And Lord Sukiyaki has the same laugh as that granny. And shortly afterwards, news of Shobun Sukiyaki's passing spread throughout Wana. So the question is, guys, when did Lord Sukiyaki actually die? Maybe he was dead for quite some time and this granny was taking his place. And not Lord Tsukiyaki actually said that Orochi will be a regent. No, it was this granny because Lord Tsukiyaki was already dead and buried somewhere in an unidentified place. That, that, that's crazy. What a plan. One day during the fourth year of Odin's voyage, what the hell is going on? The fish are going crazy. Could this signal some kind of natural disaster? It seems to be coming from that island, Whitey Chan. Yeah, I wonder if there's some sort of monster over there. Go take a look, Maka. No way, yo, that doesn't sound like fun to me. <laughs> and now we see Marco is his phoenix food, and he didn't have it before, so I think he acquired it on this uh, adventure in these four years. Wow! Come on, Hiyori, Momonosuke, everything is fine, this is no big deal. So we see Momonosuke is already a bit older, and Hiyori is still a little child, so they both were born on the ship. You're kidding, even those ferocious beasts are running away. What the heck is on this island? <gasps> Damn! I don't have any words. What is going on? Next time, bring someone like Singoku or Garp. You lot aren't even worth my time. Captain! Captain Roger! It's buggy! White Beard's ship just docked on the other side of the island. All the guys! We've only just finished this fight, Roger. White Beard, ha! Huh? It's been a while since we last crossed path. And Shanks is laughing. <laughs> and here Shanks has just... Uh, no! He does have a straw head, but on top of that straw head, he has a big pirate head. The shoe is around the island. They must have already disembarked. All right, then. Since our lives are an endless brawl anyway, we might as well just go at it. So, all the Rogers pirates. After all, I don't have much longer. They finally clash. This may be the final time we encounter each other. White beard. <gasps> Okay, okay, okay. So on this island, Roger crew, Roger's crew is on this island. Some marines were sent to fight them, but of course they were too weak. And White Bear's ship just docked at this island with Odin on board. So what is going to happen next? We know that Odin joined Roger on his final voyage, and we see from this panel that. Roger is already saying, I don't have much left. So my bet is Odin is going to join Roger right here, right now, maybe. We'll see in the next chapter. This is so crazy. This is just insane. And I wanted to do a review in the end of the flashback, like the story of Odin, and take all these chapters and make a general big review about the whole flashback. Now, so many things happening i can't believe this video will be too long i don't know actually how to go about it well that's it for now please share your thoughts about this crazy chapter in the comments down below and see ya